Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be reviewing Trails in the Sky. Right, Lily? Guys ready? Review's about to start. Now, before we begin, the Trails in the Sky series was, well, how to put it? It's a 2004 role-playing game developed by Nihon Falcom, and the game is the first and what later would become known as the Trail series. Now, it's a part of a larger Legend of Heroes series, but this is the first one. And it was originally released in Japan for Windows and later on ported to the PSP in 2006. Now I know everyone gives a little bit of a background on it, but you know, it's the least I can do. Now, North American video game publisher XC Games acquired the rights from Falcom, but they didn't release it until about 2011. But that's due to like the large amount of like text that they had to translate, because believe me guys, this is like Lord of the Rings meets Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's a lot of reading, a lot, but it's so worth it. It's amazing. The detail that is put into this is phenomenal. Now, there was an HD port on the PS3, but, you know, that was only released in Japan. So it's kind of hard to kind of give a justification for it, unless you want to play it on there. Yeah, you could. But uh, either way, we're going to go into the whole story of it. Now, Trails in the Sky FC follows the journey of Estelle and Joshua Bright as they train to become bracers in the Liberal Kingdom. Now, Joshua Bright is not really blood related to Estelle, he's adopted, but all these events that pertain to the story happen right after the disappearance of their father, forcing them to travel through the five regions of Roland, Bose, Ruan, Zeese, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and finally, Gransel. Now, from the small-scale theft of an expensive crystal to a countrywide conspiracy with a bunch of mysterious ornaments surrounded by more mystery at its center. Now, their journey through the regions has them encountering different challenges that they have to solve in order to uh, pursue the rank of a senior racer. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, Bracers are investigative and combat specialists who work to protect civilians and maintain the stability of their respective regions. They aid the community in various ways, such as exterminating monsters, preventing crime, finding lost items, and even escorting people as well as items and goods. The Bracer Guild, which, was, which has established branches across the continent, manages the affairs of the Bracers in each of those regions. Although they do not necessarily have skills to take part in active field work, the guild also recruits capable individuals to work as receptionists at the branches across their continent. Now as far as the Trails in the Sky gameplay is, there's a lot to talk about guys. You will control a cast of characters and you'll swap out between characters during different chapters. But to be aware there are two types of maps when you're going through there. There's the field map and town maps. Field maps are like legit, you're on the battlefield, you're attacking enemies, and you're learning to control and choose when you want to use magic, when you want to use attack, like physical attack, or whether you want to heal. You're learning all that. Now, the town maps are when you're in the towns and you're engaging with NPCs and you're going to and fro, and it's a lot of exploration. And each time after every event, there is different dialogue with everybody. And that's one of the unique aspects in the Trail series is that every NPC's dialogue changes as the story progresses. So you're always gonna get a bunch of new stuff to learn about characters and people you didn't think would be important. And they end up having a great side mission that gives you some weapons and upgrades and armor and gear you need. So you also need to know that the story itself is split into five different parts, okay? With a prologue followed by four chapters. So literally it's gonna be prologue, which is a lot longer than I thought, and four chapters that you end up breezing through because it's addictive. Like you honestly sit there like, oh, a few hours went by, holy Toledo, didn't see that coming. Now, combat is uh, a grid style combat and it is turn-based. The characters will turn in order determined by a tracker called the AT bar. And when it's that character's turn, the player can move or make attacks. In addition to normal attacks, each character has three other available actions. They have arts, crafts, and S crafts. Arts are magic spells that you can use to attack opponents or support anybody. Crafts are character specific abilities that are similar to like the arts, but using the same, but can be used in the same turn. However, they utilize a special gauge called the craft points or CP. Now, 
with those moves, they're unique to characters. So like they can do certain things like, for example, uh, double attack or a barrage or a way to add, you know, a damaging quick move. And it also, once the gauge fills up, they can use a special ability, which will actually bring me into the uh, S-Breaks, which allow uh, characters to immediately perform any of those um, special moves I just mentioned outside of their like turn. Like You can do them whenever you want. Now, an additional aspect of combat is that AT bonuses, which grant like bonus buffs, effects, and at certain points throughout the battle, are visible on your bar, kind of like... Uh, it'll show you like, oh, they recover health the second their turn meets, you know, it's actually pretty cool. Now, if the player loses the battle, the game is over, essentially. But the player does get the option to continue with a less struggling difficulty, so it does make it easier if you keep dying over and over and over. Now, as I was saying before, um, the game does leave off on an incredible cliffhanger. Now, this is... Trails in the Sky FC first chapter. There are three chapters in total before you go into the longer storytelling of this game. I would recommend that if you do dive into this, remember that the first game is always going to be slow. Don't knock it until you really play. It, I know some people are like, I'd rather not play a game like that, but it is, it is great. And if you guys can get past the weird Brady Bunch reference of the love story, because the main character Estelle is not related to Joshua. Joshua was adopted, but it does kind of cross a ew factor for some people. If that is the case that it's a little too much for you to handle, that's okay. Um, but I thought I would let you guys know in this review that there is a part that is a little bit ooh, like people go, that's a little gray area I don't like. That's okay. You get past that, you get into this amazing story that just evolves over a series of games. And I would definitely recommend this to anybody that's looking for an actual really fun JRPG with an amazing storytelling and writing. So at the end, honestly, this is one of those games where I recommend it to anybody that likes JRPGs. And I would say on a scale of one to 10, I give this a solid 10 out of 10. The storytelling is amazing. Sure, the gameplay is outdated, but at the time of it's released, it was ahead of its time. So I'm looking at it from the perspective of it being released at the time. Story, action, even graphics, 10 out of 10. So if you guys enjoy the review, I hope to see you on the next one.